What's going on everyone? So, after three attempts, we're finally going to watch the second trailer, the better trailer for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. And then we're going to watch the first one again, and we'll go through them. So I am sorry for the uploads and then the, the, the you know deleting the videos and things like that, but there's always been problems. And yeah, I should have pre, you know, uh, pre-watched them before I uploaded. That's nasty. But I just wanted to get them uploaded because the you know it's 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 gonna it's gonna be too late now anyway. Hype's already died down from the trailer, so. I'll be lucky if 10 people see this video. Um, and that's if you can deal with my opinions on this film, because people seem to really, for whatever reason, really hate opinions that don't line up with theirs at the moment regarding this trailer, or these trailers. What I will say to you is I think the second trailer is, is good. They should have started with this one and not the other one. Some great practical effects there. All this looks so well recreated. Bad CG. Chief Irons. That's uh, Brad Vickers. I originally thought it was Kevin Doody, it's not. Liquor looks good. Something behind the liquor, I don't know what that was. For whatever reason, Wesker warns Jill. That's good, yeah. I like that. Leon's got his rocket launcher. Taking place on a train like the second game and the, the first film. Oh, this bit's really good. So this is in the dining room, I think. You've got that big long table and then the, the chairs. So let's get back through it. Um, so Claire hitchhikes her way uh, to Raccoon City, into Raccoon City, and I think that's quite cool. Um, when she's on the bike, it's like she leaves Chris's on the bike and that's when she's traveling somewhere else but all this is is so well created uh recreated from the remake of the second game i can't fault it really cannot fault it um and someone said that they've mixed the truck driver with um robert kendo because he's wearing like robert kendo stuff i think it's just he looks similar but i think he's just a truck driver uh they cut out the graffiti that says fuck for whatever reason, I'm guessing YouTube demonetize videos if they hear swearing, but blood and stuff, as long as it's kept to a minimum, is okay. The film takes place in 1998, just like the games did. Uh, and it all takes place within one night, so or one day, you know. Uh, the outbreak sort of happens, and then the stars go to the, the Arclay Mansion, and stuff kicks off, shit kicks off uh, in the city. So Leon and Claire are trapped in the city, and the stars go through the ordeal within the mansion um, I like the riff on how he gets infected so in this the dog licks some infected blood we'll see it in a bit uh, I love this attention to detail we've got the burger just like in the uh, the opening cutscene in the game uh, hits the zombie Zombie wakes up. Really good uh, zombie makeup there. I like how this zombie looks. And then the pooch uh, licks the infected blood. It's pretty gross. And then obviously bites his owner. His owner gets infected. And there's a great bit in the second trailer we'll see later on where it's just staring at him. It's really, really creepy. Uh, went a bit overboard with his his makeup. In fact, his, blood, his eyes are all blood red. So yeah, some zombies don't have it, some do. It's confusing from what I can see. A little nod to RE4. Something watching her through the woods. And Evil Dead as well, which I think is cool. Uh, we get a good look at Raccoon City and the police station here. But the CG does look just a bit dodge. It looks a bit dodge, no matter you know what it's kind of... The only thing that didn't look dodgy was the liquor, but no matter what it's trying to recreate it looks a bit dodgy or, or create something about it is a bit cartoonish um 
You know, and I'm sorry, like, some people can be like, we all just did it. Look, man, you you got to take opinions, like, from other people and other fans and fans that are maybe been there as long as you have and, and ones that maybe haven't. And if they, you know, if there's some crappy CGI, well, don't take it too personally. Don't take it to heart. I'm not attacking your... You know what I mean? I'm not attacking you, and I'm not attacking the film. I'm just saying, the CG looks crappy. Like, that's just... You know what I mean? You can still enjoy a film. I still enjoyed the first film, and the liquor looked terrible in parts. Some parts look really good. Got William Birkin and Sherry Birkin. Would have thought they would have, I don't know, made the actress for Sherry a bit more interesting looking. She's quite plain. Um, you know? I don't know. Such an iconic character, but... Birkin's cool. He's older here, but we get to see him younger. Uh, great shot of the RPD outside the front. Um, oh, so this is Chief Irons. He's telling Leon to lock the gates, which Leon does. I like that bit. It's really cool. Claire arrives at Chris's house. And one thing that I really like that the book's kind of focused on uh, is the background. I love that he's got the white RPD shirt. That's really cool. They focused on the <coughs> on the background of the characters. Jill and, and Chris and sort of, you know, pre-apocalypse, um, like, pre-infection, uh, we got to sort of see how, you know, how Jill sort of lived in a daily routine and Chris and stuff like that and how the stars suited up and prepared for a mission. And I thought that was all really cool stuff. So I like this type of, you know, lore building. Um, in the games, it just, it kicks off, doesn't it? We, we hardly get any time to breathe, really. Like, it just sort of starts from say Code Veronica perfect example Claire's you know already at the um, the umbrella Paris facility shooting dudes and fucking dodging helicopters and stuff so you know so she knows basically about what Umbrella's been up to and it's through Ben Bertolucci who we'll see in the second trailer who she's like friends with apparently zombies break through the glass at the gates, see some of them don't have the red eyes. They look all right. They break in, storm the actual RPD. I like this. This is the the main hall of the RPD, yeah, and it looks pretty cool. It looks good. Uh, and then we got Chris. Don't know if Chief Irons is good, bad, or if he's even a chief. I guess he is. He's a chief, but maybe he's a good guy in this. I don't know where Chris is here. It's like he's trying to hide from something, so maybe we get a tyrant. Uh, they're, they're suiting up, tooling up. That's cool. They're in an armory of some kind. When he says, shall we go, I'm not sure where he is there. Um, it does look like a lab. So I think the mansion and the Arkley Forest and stuff look great. Really good. Really cool shot. Yeah, and this is like a little nod to the fixed camera angles of the old games. And that's like a zombie's watching them or something. So, I wonder if the hunters will be in it. Um, this scene's recreated. I'm not a huge fan of the prosthetics on the zombie. Uh, I don't think it has the same impact. We'll see in the second trailer what I mean. I don't think it has the same impact as the, you know, thing it's trying to recreate. Um, this isn't... Uh, God, I forget his name. Kenneth. This isn't Kenneth Sullivan, so... Apparently Enrico is supposed to be in the game. I mean, in the film, sorry. So, who knows? Uh, Rich is like, what the fuck? And then we get a good shot of the upstairs of the mansion. Stained glass windows and stuff looks great. He's got his shotgun. We get another look at the zombie. Who was munching on that, that dude. Whatever. Yeah, and then we get to see that like Richard dies. There. Uh, we've got some shots of the viruses. Great practical effects. Zombies still moving about. It's really cool. Um, Annette, I'm guessing. And Sherry. Doesn't seem like Annette knows what he does um, in this, in the film. You know, like she's not. She's not a scientist herself, it, it seems like. So, I'm not too sure. But 
yeah, and then he, that's his, you know, personality. He was like, they're not going to take my, you know, my precious G and stuff like that. Uh, the underground, underground parking garage is, is really well created. <clears throat> so Irons gets some action scenes. CG doesn't look good. You know, if I pause it here, it really doesn't look good. It, it looks absolutely atrocious. It looks horrible. That looks fucking terrible. I'm sorry, you can't defend that. I mean, I'm not trying to rag, rag on it and and say <coughs> I'm, I'm giving praises compared to my my first initial opinions of the, of the trailer. Um, but the CG is fucking god awful. And someone said something perfectly. It looks good when it's still. That didn't, but when Birkin pops up, it looked good when it's still. I love the design that they've come up with. They've changed it so slightly from the games and sort of made it their own thing, and I, I really like the design of him. It's just the CG they've used to create it. It's crap. Um, he is a chief. Yep, there we go. It says chief on the side. So he's got the Raccoon City map. He's talking to Vickers. Yep. Yeah. Helicopter. Arclay Forest. So I thought this was Kevin Doody, it's not, it's, it's Brad Vickers. And they do Vickers dirty again. He's not going to get killed by the Nemesis, clearly. Again, he gets killed by zombies. And he doesn't even get to last till the third game anymore. He gets killed in the first, you know, in the first film, so. So I'm guessing he tries to fly off while infected. He escapes them, zombifies, and crashes into the mansion. And unfortunately, it's a bit of a, a plot device to move them onwards in the story. And that's the unfortunate thing. And I know that's what this is and what it's, it's going to, you know, lead up to. So it's going to crash into the mansion, destroy loads of it. And I mean, I could be completely wrong and I really hope I am. I actually hope I am wrong in this instance. But I feel, I feel like it's going to destroy some half of the mansion which stops them searching it and stuff and they're funneled into maybe underground tunnels that go under Raccoon City and then to the lab, you know, or they just go back to, they get, you know, I don't know, well, they wouldn't get another chopper because it, it blows up, but somehow they get back to the city, so. Yeah, that's the dining hall, if we go back. The dining hall looks cool. Like, I like it. It's got the tile floor and stuff. It, you know, it's, it's alright. It's not as wide or as long as as I'd uh, want or expect. But it ain't bad. So we've got Irons and Kennedy. Love that bit there where the liquor's coming after him. That's Leon. Liquor's about to rip his face off. But this is interesting. Good CGI there. So, it's a bit baffling as to why some CGI is good and some is bad. Let's try and pause it right on that. I want to get it really... Oh, shit. Yeah, something comes up behind him. Is that Mr. X? A lot of people are saying, is it Mr. X? I fucking hope it's Mr. X. It's cool. It could be Birkin, though. I've got to be honest with you. Um, not sure if this is Hunk, but it, it's definitely the the soldiers, the Umbrella soldiers from the game. So that's cool. Um, and seeing as Hunk is just like a masked character, you know, why wouldn't they just include him? Wesker tells Jill. This is definitely Jill. He tells Jill that Umbrella is going to destroy the city. So is he a good guy? Is is he sort of? bad but not as bad as he is in the games and he just he thinks fuck it like I, I'm gonna do a good deed who knows yeah and they're sort of firing at this car here I don't know if it's civilians or you know I'm not sure what's going on there Lisa Trevor still not a huge fan of her design yeah see so I mean he doesn't even he doesn't even look like he's, he's a zombie other than the red eyes. It's a bit weird. Maybe it's sort of half and half. That's a good shot. You can't have Leon in the film without a rocket launcher. We all know Leon loves his rocket launchers. This is so annoying and slow at actually stopping when I want it to stop. Fuck no. Stop. There we go. Good. Um... Yeah, cool. Just a normal RPG. 
badass. He's on the train, he's obviously firing it at Birkin, which I think is cool. I like. Yeah, tanker explodes. We'll talk about that in the second trailer. Looks like Chris escaping an explosion, maybe from the helicopter. No, that's on the train. Okay, maybe Chris is on the train then. I don't like that bit of acting there. I truly want to get out of this town. It's weird the way he delivers the lines. and it's just weird in general, the, the lines that he has to deliver. So, uh, And there's Birkin. And like I said, taking the design from the Remaker 2, which is a good design, and then they've done their own thing with it. And I like that. We actually get a better look at his face there. But because this is so slow and I'm trying to stop it. Like, I don't think the CG looks that bad in this. But it's weird, that's what I'm saying. It's uneven, the CG's a bit uneven. The dog looked terrible when I paused it. But he doesn't look as bad. But then the liquor looks better than both of them. It's quite strange. It's almost like the first film. Because the first film, there were moments where the liquor looked dreadful. And then the bit where it's sort of like... You know, it hasn't mutated and it, it's, it recreates that classic scene where it's on the ceiling. CG was really good, like, it looked really good, so... It won't ruin the whole film, like, you can still have a film with bad CG and still be fun to watch. Like, you know what I mean? It's, that's not what I'm saying, I'm just trying to point out some things that, you know, I don't like. Uh, but I think in, far, in terms of trailers, as far as trailers go, this was way, way better than the, the first one. And I like this bit, it's a good bit of horror. Looks like it's in the dining room and it's under this table. You know? Cool zombie design, except for the red eyes. They just look goofy and he looks like he's cross-eyed, but anyway. Yeah, so, okay. We've gone through it. Um, second one, I'm not going to have to go through as much. Uh, what do I think about the first trailer? Well, this second trailer, which I've started off with first, because, you know... Um, I think it's way better. I liked it. I liked it. It was. It was. It done the. You know, it done its thing. It, it done the actual film justice. If if it's wetting my appetite to go and see it, it done it done it justice. Um, but the problem is, the first trailer they released shows a lot more issues, and this one doesn't. It's just cut better, and you know that trailers can make a film look a million dollars, and then the film be complete shit. It's happened many many times. Um, I don't think this is going to be as good as a Silent Hill film. I don't think it's going to be, you know, the best video game film to date. I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as the original, which is saying a lot, because the original is so far removed from what the games were, but then it did its own thing and it, I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. Um, but I could be wrong, but I do think this is going to be fun. That's the thing. I do think I'm going to have fun watching this, because it does look fun. But there's a lot of things that we can you know, pick it apart for, and in the next trailer we're going to do that, so, tonally, good, not the best, but good, close, yeah, visually, actually fucking perfect, near, near perfect, near perfect, not perfect, but near perfect, um, so yeah, very good visually, uh, the sounds and stuff, good, yeah, liquor, the dogs, all that stuff, you know. The script, eh, it's cheesy, but Resident Evil is B-movie-ish and can be cheesy, so that's all cool. Uh, the changes that they've made, actually okay with. Some of them, not all of them, we'll get into it in the second trailer. But, I'm actually alright with them. Um, you know, and... I'm trying to think now. Um, I've... <sighs> fitting, trying to fit two stories into one film... In a weird way, it looks like they could pull it off. I don't think they're going to, but I think it will be alright. I don't think it's going to be as much of a clusterfuck as I thought it would be originally. So, it looks like it could be okay, telling the two stories. But we are going to get into the second trailer, so join me in, in a bit. Okay, so we're going to get into the, the first trailer, because that was the second one. That we just watched and it's the better trailer overall and if you don't like opinions I'm sorry but you need to jog on because we got to talk about a lot of things with this the music choice first off is dreadful so claire okay so claire's riding through the city here so originally originally we by the way i'm gonna let it play and stop it you know so from time to time 
I like her outfit, you know, the, the biker helmet and stuff, it's cool. Yeah the, beginning. yeah, the beginning was Resident Evil 1 and Remake, but anyway. Um, Umbrella Soldiers. City's uh, already been infected. Apocalypse is broken up. Get another shot of Hunk. We'll let it run, we'll let it run. Yeah, again, they cut out fuck Umbrella. So she's a conspiracy theorist in this. The director definitely like loves Claire because this is a Claire centric film. Old VHS player, nice bit of detail. Ben Bertolucci, weird looking dude. Younger Birkin, Jill, Wesker, hiding from something. Yeah, that bit's creepy. Like itching his neck and everything, like. Ashford twins. The steam and everything looks like it's um, in the lab. Maybe it's the uh, generator room from the first first game. That'd be cool. That'd be a surprise. Nice surprise. See, it looks small there, but it's just the camera angle. Music choice is rubbish. Richard dies. Itchy Tasty handled so deftly and not as well as it was in the game. CG is horrible in that dog. I like that bit. Okay, so, alright, so, um, <clears throat> where do we leave off? So, yeah, like, Claire's a conspiracy theorist. She's friends with Ben Bertolucci. Obviously, he has a lot of uh, details on Umbrella. <clears throat> if, um, if Ben's still in the city, then, and he sent her that video from Raccoon, and she's showing Chris, then we will, we'll still get to see Ben, and maybe he gets killed. Um, if he's not, then he just doesn't die, and he's just this... This kind of plot device, essentially. Um, but Claire's like a conspiracy theorist, and Chris specifically says, you know, your conspiracy theories like are wild and crazy. Yeah, they're not. They weren't true then. They're not true now. Um, they're orphans in this. That's their backstory. So, I mean, they don't really have much of a backstory in the games in terms of. Wait for it. I know you're going to be like, what are you talking about, Chris? Before you jump, you know, down my throat. They don't have much of a backstory in terms of when they were kids and stuff, from what I can tell. But in the remake of two, um, Claire says something like she, I can't, I can't exactly remember the the exact thing, but uh, it's pretty much that Chris like looked after her, you know. So it it, it kind of alludes to, <clears throat> it kind of alludes to, to something like that. But um, like originally they didn't have backstories from when they were kids and stuff. Like it's just Chris was in the air force. Claire's a uni student. And that's that. Leon's a rookie cop, you know. This is uh, the gallery, art gallery room. Um, the art room looks a little different. It's fine. Is this the same shot? I'm not too sure. It's hard to tell, but it's like a secret umbrella hidden passage. Orphanage, I'm thinking. Love the, the attention to detail, though, I will say that, like the VHS player and stuff. Very, very cool. I really like that we get to see Chris at his house and stuff, and he's not, like, proper well-off or anything. He's, you know... So ben, Ben's a funny-looking dude, man. Uh, but you can see that he's got all the umbrella stuff behind him, and, you know... He's the typical Ben from, from the games. It just doesn't look very much like Ben. But Ben changed appearance anyway. He changed appearance from the, the original to the remake... You know, I think he, he looks cool as Chris. I think all the characters look fine. Definitely, there are some weird choices. Um, 
I think Evan Joggio is decent as Leon when he's shooting a gun. But some of the lines he delivers are a little bit crap. Having said that, they're the lines he's been given by the director. It's not necessarily on his shoulders because I have seen him, like I said, in clips and he is actually quite a good actor. He's not the most amazing or the best. I don't think any of the cast in this film are, you know, top, top, top tier Leonardo DiCaprio actors, but we don't expect that, do we? Um, but yeah, like, I just think, I don't know, like, it's going to have a bit of a crappy script. The games have a crappy script, so I can deal with that. I love the fact, like, tonally, it's raining, it's dark, all this stuff I like. This is filmed in Canada, I believe. That's cool. An umbrella is shot from the storm. Yeah, uh, a younger Birkin there in the orphanage. Jill looking cool. Yep. Uh, Wesker's hiding from something. What? I don't know. Still not a fan of Lisa Trevor's design. Not the worst. Definitely not the best. Should have kept it simple. RPD, she just looks like a crazy cat lady. <laughs> she looks like a crazy cat lady. Shh, you'll wake my cats. Like, for God's sake, it's cheesy, that's the thing. I don't. She doesn't do that sort of shit in the game. And people are like, well, the games are cheesy, but the games are silly. Yeah, okay, alright, but the remake of the first one isn't that cheesy. It's not that silly, not really. You know, it's actually very slickly handled, it's a very slick horror experience. You know, a bit like Alien. Um, I don't know what to say. And Lisa Trevor's creepy. She just doesn't really talk. She just stalks into rooms and stuff. And you can hear her chains. That's what's, that's the creepy thing about her. You know? The only thing she ever says is mother or she screams. It, it, do you know what I mean? So for her to be like, shh. It's, it's fucking cheesy, cheesy horror. It's like the nun or, you know, something like that. So... RPD looks good. Uh, very creepy. I like this bit. So the dog's infected his owner. It's very creepy the way he's just staring at him. But this is a, a... Okay, so like I said, choices. Weird choices that they make. Recreating the famous tanker crash. In the game, you want to have a reason behind my opinions. Behind some of my negative opinions. You want some context. Here's the context. This is just done for cool effect. And then zombies break into the RPD, as we've seen. In the game, the tank crashes and it blocks Claire from Leon or Leon from Claire. And each one are on two opposite sides, right? One side leads straight to the RPD. Or it's a quicker route to the RPD, much quicker. The other side and the other person has to then go all around the city streets and get to the RPD. Um... Now, when the tanker crashes, there's basically like it, there's a whole load of destruction around it. Yeah, so it sets the scene. So there's abandoned cars, cars on fire, police barricades, uh, shops looted, the whole nine, the whole nine yards, the whole lot, and it actually crashes into the the police car that that Leon and Claire were in, and they escape just in time. In this, just rolls over and explodes. That doesn't match up to, to, to the video game, you know, intro sequence. I don't think that's that's nowhere near as good. And he's like, we got you got to help us, Claire. Okay. I guess maybe because she's the, the Chris's sister. And he knows it's Chris's stars. It blows up. Zombies trying to break in somewhere. Uh, we've seen this. Iron's face off against the Cerberus. I feel like Irons is a good guy. Could be wrong. Yeah, Vickers dies. He gets dragged out, which is cool. Um, so yeah, she gets on the bike from Chris's. Rides through the city. Goes to the RPD. I think that's cool. It's a good build up. Uh, where is he here? Lab coat's in the back. It's, it's obviously a lab. Cool. Then Claire gives Leon his flak jacket. His iconic flak jacket. Uh, it's a very Claire-centric film. It's not a bad thing. 
it's not a bad thing. I think that's, that's alright. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just very Claire centric. And I'm a huge Jill fan, so. I still think Claire's a bad loss character, though. Uh, I'm not sure if the helicopter, this is the Star's helicopter, so if it does crash and explode and there's no other helicopters, then it's going from the city to the Arclay Forest. Don't know why there's an overturned car here. Maybe that's the, the MP truck from Zero. It's a little nod, little Easter egg. And um, this is heard audibly in the original and the remake of the first game. Um, Jill basically says, look down there, Chris, you know, it's a mansion. So yeah, they actually show it visually here. It's pretty cool. Got Wesker and uh, Richard. I mean, Richard Icon doesn't even look like his... The, all the actors, other than Chris, don't resemble their their characters that much. Um, but at the same time, they, strangely enough, pull it off. Because I've detached myself from this being directly adapted from the games. So yeah, that's maybe why. it's. I've done it to myself and detached my, myself from from what they're supposed to look like, so, you know, uh, like Ben Bertolucci doesn't even look like Ben, to be honest with you, Irons is kind of close, I mean, Birkin's is young in the games, so, you know, but he does pull it off, then he's got this sort of like, DNA sequence code, print out, which is cool. It's obviously the G virus. And he's like crazily looking at it. Uh, this is a nod to the first film, the way it's shot and everything. It's just a lift um, taking them to the lab or something. So this is cool. But again, it's throwing things in there. So this, I think this is setting up the next film and the premise for the next film. We get a look at the Ashford twins. So it's Alexia and uh, Alfred, but it's Birkin in the background doing experiments on them. There's a good look at Alfred there plucking those dragonfly wings off. Oh, that's Alexia. There's Birkin, younger. Um, yeah, the Ashford twins, as you can see. It's cool. Umbrella's literal box of secrets. That's a good shot. So this looks like it's in the generator room. He does pull off Chris, I've got to be honest. Like, he's pretty cool Chris. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we've got Lisa Trevor. Dangerous, that's her file. It said something... Yeah, what's it? Like, yeah, 1967. This is after the helicopters exploded, so that's pretty cool. But like, then again, see, so he doesn't really resemble Wesker here, does he? This is the thing. Like, if you look here, he doesn't doesn't look like Wesker. You know what I mean? Um. So I previously said this might be Lisa Trevor, but it's not. It's just a zombie. See, there it's sort of almost like he's he knows what's going on now. Uh, a lot of people are like, why have they got the machine guns? Because machine guns would be a better option than the samurai etches. This is one of the changes where it actually makes more sense. Yeah, you know, they'd have better hardware and then they're probably carrying the samurai edges as a backup weapon. So I have no issues with that. The MP5 is a perfect gun anyway, like in, in that way, you know. To take into a situation like that. Get a really good look at... Ah, uh, maybe that's where Ben's being killed because she looks surprised like like fuck do you know what I mean what's happened and then Leon like shoots that zombie uh, yeah we got the alcoves and stuff and the, the little bit around the back of the stairs you know with the umbrella sealed gates and then leading to the, the catacombs and down there's Lisa Trevor so you know and the, uh, the grave site of her mum so that's pretty cool Really good shot, and a lot of people said, oh, it looks too small. If you look from the other angle and stuff, from the stairs, in the other trailer, it actually looks fine. It's going to be slightly smaller, isn't it? Let's be real. It's not going to be as big. It's not going to be completely accurate to the games. And I didn't expect it to be, in all fairness, either. 
Uh, piano, little Easter egg there. Moonlight Sonata. So, she doesn't have her beret or her shoulder pads, but she is wearing navy blue, and she's got the stars insignia on her breast. Uh, I don't mean on a on a breast plate or you know it's on it's it's a breast hurt. Just digging myself a hole. It's on her chest. <laughs> There's too much makeup on this zombie. Uh, I think we talked about it previously, but yeah, still not a big fan. They should have, they should have made it exactly identical to what it looks like in in the game. If anything, they were going to adapt those classic iconic scenes, take them, rip them straight out of the game, and, and you know recreate them in that way. At least he's a lab zombie. Looks like Chris is getting uh, grabbed here. It's quite a funny shot of his face. I'm gonna lie. Is that the same zombie? Might be. He looks a bit better here. Contacts are overdone though. Uh, I don't know. He's taking people out. He's taking zombies out here, which is cool. Is he still in a mansion? Not too sure. Richard dies. <laughs> it's confirmation. The trailer song is atrocious. It's fucking terrible. This is a, a scene that's ruined. Itchy tasty. And again, I'll reiterate and um, give you some context. Uh, so this scene, okay, Itchy Taste is just written in blood, just randomly, hap haphazardly, not randomly, but hap haphazardly and bluntly thrown in there uh, as a nod to fans. And compared to the video game version of this, how this is ha handled in the video game, it's it's through a you know a diary. Uh, the 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 animal keeper has written, and he talks about the hunters and how they look like skinned gorillas, and they threw a pig in there and it ripped it to bits. And then he says about men came in hazmat suits. And then as it gets further, you know, goes on further, he then starts to zombify. And his handwriting becomes kind of unreadable. And he just ends with itchy, tasty, dot, dot, dot. And it's creepy. It builds tension. You're like, oh, what happened here? Do you know what I mean? What happened in this mansion? Stuff that we didn't get to see when the outbreak happened. We just There's the remnants of it. And we've just stumbled across, you know, the uh, the outbreak after it's, it's done its thing. It's ripped through the mansion. Here, it's just written in blood by some zombie woman. It doesn't stack up to the, you know, how the video game handles that particular moment. And that, not even to mention that the zombie then bursts out the fucking um, wardrobe behind, you know, whoever you're playing as. This is like, kind of like the... The diner scene where she first sees the foot, the zombie. She first sees her first zombie, but it's, instead it's in a house. Um, they meet up after the mansion incident. Uh, a lot of people said it, this might be in a lab somewhere or something. It's underground raccoon. I think they're they're right, definitely. So he goes from the mansion underground, and they bump into each other. And that's kind of something they took from the first film because the first film said that there was, you know. Um, like a railway system and an underground sort of network that connected Raccoon City to the mansion. So, in that film. Love that, the conviction in Leon's face, the anger. Like, is that his Matilda? Maybe. Uh, he's taking this zombie out. That's really what cemented it for me, where I thought, he's actually an alright Leon. He's, he's really giving it his all, you know what I'm saying? So, Still not shooting for the head, though. There's, a, there's not a lot of headshots in, in this... Maybe they haven't worked out that if you shoot him in the head, it takes him up. Uh, Irons, Kennedy, and Claire. Rubber CG dog again. I love that scene. It's really good. Great horror moment. This is cool. Very claustrophobic. I like this. This is a cool, cool scene. Oh, she did blow his head off. Okay, she shot him in the head there, I think. Yeah, he definitely takes it to the head. Again, huge fan of the design, designer Birkin. Just the CG that they've used to make him is crap. And that's where Birkin's infected. Contacts are a bit crap, aren't they? A bit rubbish. I knew a kid in my school, in my secondary school, that uh, had better contacts than that. And that was when they were like the thick glass ones. 
Um, this scene, I mean, okay, it, to me, it's rushed. It's a bit blunt. This, the one thing I'll say about this whole film that I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna get when we go and see it is we're gonna feel rushed. It's gonna feel rushed as a product, definitely. Um, this is handled sort of very very bluntly, and it's quite rushed. And a lot of people say, well, in the remake of two, it kind of does just grab this dead body and then drop from the ceiling and it's not like the original where it's this whole cut scene and build up you know and then you see the cop with the twisted off head and then leon looks up and the liquor's there yeah like it's definitely following the remake of two um but that still builds it up because there's a cop with his jaw sliced you know open and stuff maybe that's going to happen here i don't know because we haven't seen haven't seen the film yet um it's not a big deal i still think it's all right it's, it's not it's not as like it's not as bad, in my opinion, as the other scenes they tried to recreate. So, I like the way it twists itself and then lands. That's definitely the the remake. The remake slicker. Um, if it dropped from the, oh, okay. So obviously they were running. It's on the ceiling. They run, then it drops. Okay, so maybe we do get the the build up of it slowly crawling on the ceiling and look at them looking up. They just haven't shown it. CG's really good here, though. This is what I don't understand. Maybe it's a bit of practical, because that looks almost practical, mixed with a little bit of CG. And we get that, just that quick snippet of something behind it. Yeah. Cool. So, the trailers. That's my opinions and my thoughts. My overall definitive opinions and thoughts of both trailers. Um, I still stand by kind of how I was you know in the beginning and before uh, no, ma no matter how much I was impressed by the second trailer and it was cut better and it's just better in, in every every way uh, and they got rid of the crappy backing track that they used on this um, it's still it's still just the trailer and then the first trailer shows you more and when you piece it together do you know what I mean you, you end up getting a, a bigger picture um like, if I had have just seen the second trailer, I would have been more impressed, but I still would have found the faults in there. But it's the first trailer where you start to see all these classic sort of, like, um, scenes and these Easter eggs haphazardly thrown in there. And that's something that bugs me a little bit. It's the fact that he might actually be a fan of the games, but the way that he's handled it is a bit crap. Like, that's, you know, it's like, here, fans, look, look, do you remember this? And it, But it's not handled as well. It's like, why did you... You know, the itchy tasty thing, it's literally, he's just thrown it in there. You can tell that, you know. Um, so, yeah, but on the bright side, it looks fun. I think I'm going to enjoy watching it. And the more I've watched the trailers, the I've become more warmer to the, to the film, definitely. Because um, I was eyes cold to start with. But I've, be I've become warmer to the films because it's a hard one. Um, it's not offending me. That's the thing. The film, in and of itself, isn't offending me. Is it because I've been let down previously, and this is a lot more like Resident Evil in a lot of ways uh, than the previous load of films? Or is it just that, I don't know, like Resident Evil's kind of, for me, has lost that that edge, you know, after the remake of 3 and, and 8, and, you know. Um, obviously, I'm still, still a huge Re uh, Resi fan, of like the original games and the remake of two you know and some parts of three so i see bits in there of that um i don't know it's weird it's been changed so many times that's what it is i think you know resident evil's been rebooted and changed so many times and it can be this and it can be that and it could be that i think with this film and what he's trying to do it's not offending me like it maybe at the beginning i was ice cold with it i was like fuck this film literally like fuck this film um and some part of me is like fuck this film it looks crap yeah but the other side of me is like it's not offending me you know it's not like oh it's so bad i can't sit down and watch it and maybe get some enjoyment out of it so i mean there is that is it what I wanted? No, it's really not what I wanted. I just wanted them to adapt the first game. That's all I wanted. Literally, just adapt the first game. You can change it all you want, you know. Not drastically, but you can make changes and do whatever you want to do. And 
you know, but just adapt the first the first game, just have it set in the mansion. You don't need to, to bring in all these other storylines for the for the start, you know, for the beginning. And then go with two. If you wanted to, you could combine two and three. Yeah, like it makes more sense because they take place with this, within the same time frame or nearabouts. Um, so, yeah, like, but I, I'm looking at like the CG films, although they are vastly better. Uh, and I've just got done watching, you know, Defenders of the Realm, the Mortal Kombat animated film, and that was really good. I actually liked it more than Scorpion's Revenge. Oh, I know, blasphemy. Uh, but yeah, I liked it more than Scorpion's Revenge. I thought it, it was it was cool. And the fact that I'm a huge Liu Kang fan, I, I like what they did with with you know with that character. Um, so yeah, maybe coming from that, I I am definitely going to be a bit more, you know, a bit more wary because that done it right. Defenders of the Realm handled Mortal Kombat right, but the film, the live action film, it. Didn't, it literally had everything there that could have made it amazing, like the best video game film of all time, and instead they threw in Cole Young, and it's kind of a crappy story and some shit sets. Like, there were some rubbish sets. Didn't even make any sense, like, within the Mortal Kombat kind of, you know, lore and stuff. Um, and they just, it's more like they went out, it's like they were on that path, and they would, they had everything perfect, you know, R-rated. All the characters looked like the characters, and they just went, oh, and they took a detour and sidestepped and fucked it up. And I've only seen clips and scenes of it, but I've watched nearly like the whole movie through clips and scenes, and it's like, nah, they fucked it. And that's kind of where I'm with at with this. Like, and after the Netflix show disappointed me, you know. Uh, but the funny thing is, I find I find this is going to be more enjoyable than the Netflix CGI series. Uh, strangely, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. It's a hard one. Um, doesn't offend me. I don't think it's complete utter shit in the same way that Mario Bros film is <laughs> you know or Street Fighter even though they're like guilty pleasures but um you know or even Doom uh, I do think it's just below Doom in terms of video game ad adapted films definitely but we still got Uncharted to come Mark Wahlberg plays Sully that offended me <laughs> fucking Sully what Victor Sullivan He's not old enough to be Victor Sullivan. He doesn't even resemble Victor's personality. Tom Holland as Drake? Really? I think the only guy that can play Drake is Nathan Fillion. But anyway. So, the cast, none of them except for Chris look like their video game counterparts. But at the same time, they pull it off strangely, weirdly. You know, just about. Um, yeah. Script. It's going to be hokey, but... This type of film it is. It's almost B movie-ish. That's maybe why I'm I'm vibing with the trailer uh, after the, the sixth, seventh viewing is because I do like my B movies. I like my Evil Dead's and stuff like that. And um, this is very B movie-ish. So you know, and I'm a fan of Resident Evil, and that's based on B movies, and it is B movie-ish in its own own right. So maybe that's uh, you know that's a saving grace for this. Um, the CG is terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, set designs on point, really good. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say. November the 24th, I'm going to go and see this film, and I'm going to give you guys a, a full review of it. Like, the second trailer did it did it justice, first trailer, not so much, but it's all about going to see the film now. Uh, so then my opinions, I have warmed to the film a little bit more, definitely. Is it what I wanted? Like I said, no, um, but I'm not you know, a director, a producer, and not involved in Hollywood. So it's down to these guys to deliver something that can at least be an in enjoyable, fun, you know, hour and a half and whatnot runtime. So we will see when the film is out. Uh, until next time, I've been System Check 66. Go ahead, like the video, dislike the video if you can't stand another person's opinions. Um, leave your comments in the comments section. What do you think about the, the trailers? Do you think the second one's better? Do you like the first one better? Let me know. Yeah. And uh, until next time, I'm System Check 66 and I'm out of it. Peace.